Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Cafe. My name is Isaac, and we are back with a brand new game. This is Firewatch. It came out today at the day of streaming this. This is being streamed live over on twitch.tv forward slash gaming on caffeine. So, uh, throughout this series, if you hear me talking to like the Twitch chat or just talking to anybody in general, really, uh, then that's what I'm doing. I'm talking to the Twitch chat who are watching this live uh, as the video is recorded. This is the new game that came out today. It's a first person mystery adventure, is how Steam describes it. And it looks pretty cool. We're going to start a brand new game. I did start a game already. Um, just to kind of get a feel for what the game was like, see if it ran well enough on my PC. It does. The intro is a little slow, bear with it, but it's pretty cool. Campo Santo presents, that's the studio who developed the game. In cooperation with Panic Inc. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. So this kind of building a story of who we are as a character, uh, for those who are wondering here. You see Julia. And we've got to like click these as we go along here. Uh, and some of them do have options, which is pretty cool. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with a well-dressed professor and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. So these are the two options we get to pick. Um, so, what's your major? Or you. You're pretty. We are pretty drunk, so we we gotta pick carefully here. I'm gonna go with uh, with you, you over there. You're pretty. You're pretty. She says coolly. You are not. You are future. You're a future hangover. What? You replied confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger. She says. She flags down a waiter, and one week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Okay. And then between the uh, the texts here, there are a few little like. Glimpses of gameplay. So this is those. We can use the left mouse button to pick stuff up. We've got a backpack over here. And the music is very subtle. But it's it, it it's really... I feel like something bad's going to happen. Like right from the get-go with this music. I don't know if you can hear it uh, all too loudly. But it's very slow. It's very like mellow. It's very atmospheric. I love it. You dare for over a year? She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it home with her. To, or she wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. So, I've no idea what happens, like, if there's any repercussions to which of these two options you pick, or any of the options you pick, during the intro dialogue, or if it's just kind of uh, setting the scene and getting you invested in the characters here. But I'm gonna go with uh, you, you pick up the bigger lie, and she names it Bucket. Because Bucket is just a fantastic name for a dog. Bucket's a good dog. And a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. 1979. You talk out on the deck, it's summer, 9.30pm, and the heat still radiates off the high, the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids? They're not very smart, or good at much, really. Uh, I'm saying if you, if you and I have some, a couple of little idiots, that would be good, or one day, why rush? We should, that would be pretty good. Julia seems like a nice kind of person. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably the best for their parents. Are, it's probably best if their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. And again, we've kind of got this, this little bit of, of gameplay. The intro cutscene bit is not over. Don't you worry. Um, our backpack is no longer in the in the back here. Uh, what have we got? This this is quite. There's a little bit of exploring to do in here. Fire danger. Danger is like super high today. That scares me a little bit. What have we got over here? We've got like a, 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 a sign. Thoroughfare Trail Land. We've got a map. Do not forget to check in. No fireworks. Strictly no fireworks. It's red and everything. Thoroughfare Trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Thoroughfare Trail is a primitive... Oh, I can zoom in. Black Country Trail. You're in their country. Learn to live with bears. Ooh. Ooh, that does not sound fun at all. Jeez. Okay. Let's keep moving here. Um, oh, Moobot's telling people the time in chat. One second, guys. Let me 
Let me quickly just turn off my my chatbot over on Twitch. Sorry for the extreme immersion breaking right here. Okay, 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is in four hours late. She doesn't, oh, she's four hours late. She hasn't returned home yet. She doesn't call you. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You get mad or you ignore her. I don't think we should ignore her. That seems a little childish. We'll, we'll get mad. You call her an inconsiderate asshole. Also, before we continue, I should point out this game is meant for an adult audience. If you are below the age of, I'm not going to put an age on it, but I think the game might be a 15 or an 18. Uh, it does use some strong language. There are a lot of curse words in this game. Uh, so if that's going to offend you in any way, you can click away now. Um, but it's, it's a pretty strong game. It's got some strong language. It's meant for an adult audience. Continue at your own discretion. Okay. She tells you to fuck yourself and not to be such a baby. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it, and it hurts her feelings. 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plans from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. I mean, why would we not frolic like a Victoria's Secret model? Julia is right. You are very pretty. All right, we're still hiking along. And I must admit, like, right off the bat, this game is absolutely beautiful. Like, uh, if you're watching on Twitch, you probably might not get a full grasp of it. But if you're watching on YouTube uh, at, like, 1080p, 60fps, this game looks absolutely fantastic. It looks brilliant. Uh, look, look at, like, the sun rays coming through there. The art style is, like, just right. I love it. I absolutely love it. Two forks. Lookout tower. Eight miles more still. Okay. I believe we can jump over this. We can. And I believe we can also use R to sprint. We might have to try that a little bit later on down the line. Okay, 1982. During the summer, you and Julia enjoy walking Bucket at night. Bucket is our dog. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. Be my bad fuck the dog, Julie says. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she's stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away. You beat the goddamn you beat his goddamn face in. I'm going to scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare off all three. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her not to take the job or agree if she commutes back and forth. This is a tough option. Like, if it was me, I don't know what our job is. It's like, from our position, I don't know what we do as a person. But I'd be tempted to go with her if that was the case, unless we have like a really high, like super job that we can't leave. Or something else keeping us where we are. But having a commute 2,000 miles or just... I don't think convincing her to go is going to do well either. So I think we just have to agree if she commutes back and forth. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says I'll be hard, but she'll do it if you don't want to move. You tell her not to pass up the job if it's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. 1985. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost, it on a she lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just a few days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to somebody about it? You make, <laughs> you make a drink of wine and forget about it. Uh, I think it's probably a best idea if we talk about it with somebody. If she's having a bit of a breakdown. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. This is the only option we have. And here we go. We're back in. 
We're kind of progressing through the day as we're telling the story. Maybe rethinking it in our minds, something along those lines. We can't actually move right now. I think we might be sat down for the evening. Uh, but we have a journal. Uh, warning, you're about to see uh, a naked picture. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we we, we followed like a Victoria's Secret model. No idea if I'm going to have to censor that out for, uh, for YouTube, but we'll see. <laughs> Bucket is getting older. Bucket's our dog. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. Julia's affliction gets worse, 1987. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the, Duli the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn child children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. You decide to move her into a full hot time care facility, or you're determined to take care of your take care of her by yourself. The, again, we've just started the game and it's full of tough decisions. I feel like we should take care of her by herself, but if we're if we're like we're looking forward to the, the 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 visits from the nurse so much, maybe it's too much for us. I mean, I'll say we're determined. Alright. This is an interesting little path. Not a whole lot going on. But like before, we don't have our car, so we've, got, we've definitely gotten further away. I don't know if we have our lantern. We've probably got a backpack on us. But not a whole lot of stuff. Again, the game, I can't stress how beautiful this game is. Oh, look, it's like a... Oh, it's a deer. Oh, and it's gone. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think that we were going to be able to do anything with that. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter. Drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do, you worry about her getting up and waking up while you're gone. Do we put a chair in front of the bedroom door, or trust that she'll sleep like a rock? I don't really trust that she'll sleep like a rock. I have a feeling that we're going to have to put a chair in front of the bedroom door if we're going to leave. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple of nights a week. You look forward to those nights. 1989. One night, you are stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a point ten and I'll take it to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. So the, she, the wife's sister. Julie's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe in the state of your house. They then tell you that Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue, you'll say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by, summer is coming, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. And that's the end of the intro prologue right there. That's the end of the story building. And that takes us to exactly where we are now, which is right here. And this is kind of where the bulk of the game comes in. So we're going to enter the lookout tower and, and we're going to progress from there. Uh, so I believe we can hit R, R to run and sprint up to this, to this lookout tower and find out what the heck all this is about. We've just done like a multiple day hike up to this place. We're living with bears, apparently. And there's a, a high fire danger. Turn on the power. All right. So this is where we're going to be living, I assume. Um, all right. Generator switch on. Beautiful. Look at this. The map table. Hello, we can... Two Forks Tower. Oh. Hello. Okay. Hold left shift to activate the radio. 
And then we can scroll down. So multiple times as we go through the game, we'll get options. Oh, this woman on the other end of the walkie-talkie here will talk to us. And then we'll have multiple choice options to talk back. Kind of like a, a Telltale game or maybe something like Life is Strange. Um, hello. Hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine. Then can I what, sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Okay. Uh, you've killed three ex-husbands. You're rebelling against mom. Nobody back home can stand you. I think she's somebody who killed three ex-husbands. Okay. Uh, you've killed three husbands. You're a black widow and you're just out here until the heat dies down and then you'll kill again. Ooh, very good. Bravo, Henry. Okay, I sleep now? Not quite. Now you. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. But maybe you just really like trees. Maybe it's... Gosh, maybe it's a borderline fetish. A tree fetish. She's onto us, guys. Good night. She knows about our tree fetish. Good night. Welcome to the job. Firewatch. This is our job now. Dear one. We're right in a way. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. She can see me at my desk? Whoa, 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 whoa. Answer the radio call? Let's shift, right? Where's the radio? Oh, it's here. You, whoa, I, I'm... <laughs> sorry, I guess I slept hey, in. Sorry, guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14... Oh, sorry, guys. Teen hours of sleep? Woo. Yeah, Jesus. I guess it's what, six? 6.45. Whoops. Ah, that's a lot of sleep. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Yes, I do see it. Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing. Um, you, uh, you use this to- Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Now I know, right? West-facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? West-facing window. Where's west? Um, I confirm what you're seeing. Oh, end the compass. West. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I see the fireworks. Do I have to put my compass away? To like, be like, yeah, I see the fireworks. I need you to confirm. Do you see them? Yep, yeah, I see the fireworks. Oh, that's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set them straight. Okay. Uh, like, kick the shit out of them? Can I write them a ticket? It's not really... I'm not really the discipline. Do you think like, you can handle that? Can I write them a ticket? Do I write them a ticket? Easy there, Dirty <laughs> Harry. Well? Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. <laughs> it's actually that for all of them. That seems like a super safe code. Secure. Secure. Shut up. <laughs> okay, so. Day one. This is our job. We're going to go out into the world and we're gonna stop whoever is is using these fireworks so again i'm not too sure what our job is right now we're some kind of like ranger we're some kind of person who defends against people who use fireworks in high fire areas or something like that but we'll find out i guess as we go along it is a bit of a mystery game uh, m to read map okay so this is our map we've got to go uh, west which is currently this way uh, find rope in the nsf cash box 306 uh okay Jonesy, Jonesy Lake? We gotta go to Jonesy Lake. I assume that's this way. And I assume somewhere along the way, we will find our... Oh, look. Oh, we, so we can zoom in on the map here. I see. I see. I see. Oh, and it even tells us where we are. That's that's one very high-tech paper map right there. Uh, so the lake is... Is it this lake? 
I'm not too sure what lake we're going to here. There's a lake over there. Oh, no, it's right at the end there. Jonesy Lake. It's quite a hike, actually. Wow, okay. So I guess let's just head this way. There's no, like... Wait, is there a box on the map? No, we've just come from that tower. We've just come from that tower, and we got to go find our way to, to this lake and uh, find out who the heck is, is doing stuff with the, with the fireworks. So we're just going to continue on west, I guess, for the time being and see what we can do. She said we needed a rope. Is the rope, like, did we pass it? Let me, let me get rid of my map for a second. And let's run. So R is to run. Did we, did we, like, walk past the box that we were supposed to grab that was, like, at the base of the tower? Or something like that? Because I don't want to get to the point where we need the rope and then don't have the rope. So let me do a little bit of, of exploration. It's a little bit of an open, I, want, I don't want to say open world game. It's a somewhat linear game. But there are definitely, like, open world areas like this. Like, ooh, what the heck? This looks like some kind of, oh, we can reply back. Uh, this is all the electricity I've got. So this generator is all the power I've got out here. Yep, it doesn't go through much gas, and well, you don't have much in the way of electronics, so. Okay. Um, uh, but my head's right. Oh, I'm sorry. You might just have to make peace with frizzy locks. I could never. Uh, so this outhouse. Um, so it's uh, just the outhouse then, in terms of going to the bathroom. You're a man, Henry. You can go wherever you want. Wow, I'm, I'm so glad that I have your approval, and, uh, full disclosure, Delilah. I pee wherever I want as well. <laughs> okay, uh, so apparently the uh, the chat is telling me that the uh, the the box is on the map. So let's take a look here. Where where is this box? Is that it right there? Like the little flashing beacon? Oh no, cash three oh six. I see it right there. Okay, so we were going the right way. Let's turn off our map. And let's just go. We're gonna go this way. Where was where's the tower? It's there. Okay, so we were heading west in this direction so we're just gonna keep going this way um it's a little bit of a trek but we're gonna find that box part way through the code is one two three four um i think sure that's the code for all of them because we made a joke about it being super secure uh is this the right way it looks like a very very like rocky mountainous area that we definitely don't want to try and like climb down just yet that seems incredibly dangerous like are we still going west yeah we are we're still going west okay we'll head We'll head this way. I have seen um, a little bit of this game. I know there are multiple different ways that you can get to your end objective. So, like, there's multiple different paths you can take uh, on the way there. I'm not too sure if they make, again, too much of a difference to the actual gameplay. But this seems to be working. I can see something. Oh. I can hear stuff. I can see, like, a little uh, orange box over there in the distance, which I'm assuming is uh, Cash 306 with our rope in it. Ah, here we go. Here we go. All right, what we got? Uh, I found the supply box. So there are a lot of these in the woods, or what's the code again? I found the supply, I found box. The supply box. Great. Okay. Can I open this? Oh, I can. Okay, so here we go. Uh, one, two. Uh, that's not right. I need to go back. Three and four. Beautiful. I'm surprised no one has stolen that yet because that is like the easiest passcode ever. Uh, okay, old rope. I will take. Deal with whoever is setting off the fireworks. That's our current goal. Okay. Pinecone. Um, <laughs> sure. Why not? Uh, and, ooh, a granola bar. Do I want to, like, hold? Eat. Hold to eat. Um, oh, hey, a snack. Uh, I thought we weren't supposed to have food out here. Uh, oh, we're supposed, I suppose we were supposed to leave food out here. I assume it's like a bear thing. People just stuff these things with old food. That's how you get bears. Yep, I knew it. Those boxes are bear proof. I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, can I eat this? Or is that like a, a bad idea? How 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 long has this box been? <laughs> no, I don't wanna I don't wanna leave it there, then we will get a bear. You know what? I'm gonna put it back in the cache. We're gonna close it. Nope, I wanna I wanna I wanna close. I want I don't want the map. Oh no, we just put Oh we updated our map. Okay, so each of these caches has like lines or like areas of the map that we can we can check out. Oh, what is this? Um, Ron, hey man. Oh, we should probably press Q so I can get a nice little. Yeah, here we go. Um, 7786. Ron, hey man. Guy couldn't take it, so I locked it. I locked up his lookout and put some stuff in the box. Found one of those bars you liked hiking in the park, but let's get fucked when I'm back. Dave. Okay. So this is kind of like a bit of a. Oh, the game broke a little bit there. Uh, a little bit of like a, um, a backstory kind of thing. I will keep this. I don't know if we're going to need it later. Can I close this? Oh, we can. Okay. We can come back later if we want to get that, that bar. Hopefully a bear can't like open that thing up and uh, and get into it. I doubt that's the case. Um, so let's have a quick look at our map here real quick and see where we are. So we are currently right about there. And we're just going to keep on down. So you can see there's kind of like three different paths here that we can take. We can go to the right, we can go to the left, or we can go straight forward. And all of them are going to take us over to... 
to, jo to Jonesy Lake over there. There's a lot. Oh, my goodness. Look how big this map is. Are we going to have to walk all around all of this place? That, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, all right. Well, I guess we're going to go, like, continue on west. Did it change, like, did it change the direction we're facing on the map? No, it doesn't. All right. So I'm going to continue heading west and see if we can get to the place we're supposed to go. So this looks like a path. I'm going to take it. So, apparently this isn't the longest game in the world. Uh, I think the developer said about five or six hours is how long it'll take for the average person to complete it. Um, so, it's like a very story-driven game. And I'm, I like, I wasn't as super interested at first. But then when I heard it was more of like a story-driven game than it was kind of like a survival game, I was super into it. I don't know if any of you guys played Oxenfree, a game that recently came out on Steam, PlayStation, I think Xbox as well. Um, but that was like a very story-driven game as well. And I have been like super into story-driven games. Like, just a ton recently ever since i played life is strange i think i've been really enjoying just like really not too like super hard games like games like this and obviously it's not a super hard game but the, the story in it a good a game with a good story really is a game that i like <laughs> okay so we're heading over here i see a, a tree stump a few broken down trees it's a very very calm place to be uh i'll have to toggle jogging okay so we don't run we can just jog and apparently we can't jog with the map up but that's fine let's get rid of our map we don't need it Clawed up tree. Okay. Hey, there's a tree out here that's been ripped to hell. And? Don't you think that's, you know, like, uh, disconcerting? Henry, there are 500-pound grizzly bears out here. They sharpen their claws on trees. We don't have grizzlies in Colorado. People killed them a long time ago. Well, in the thoroughfare, they hunt people, they kill people, they bury their bodies, and then come back weeks later to eat them because they prefer rotten meat. People just disappear. Don't you think that's disconcerting? That is a no, little Henry, disconcerting. Christ, lady. Okay. So, we've got a rope hook. Uh, we've got a very, very steep drop here that I'm not too excited about. But, I mean, I guess we can do this. Um, can we, like, radio this in? Oh, here we go. We can report shale slide. Uh, this shale slide is steep. How do you expect me to get down this? I don't remember it being that bad. It's not even named on our topos. Uh, maybe call it Cripple Clutch? Maybe call it... <laughs> I'll call it the Widowmaker. No, I'd go with Widowmaker. Come on, it's really not that bad. It's a 50-foot cliff made of rocks that look like knives. No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no! Oh. oh, that's not good. First day on the job and everything. Oh, we still got our wedding ring on. That's a good sign. Ow! Hey. What the hell's wrong with you? Uh, Widowmaker got the best of me. <laughs> what exactly happened? My rope snapped coming down the shale slide. You didn't break anything, did you? No, I think I'll make it. Well, be careful for Christ's sake. Uh, okay. So we've got another one of these. But we don't hey, have a rope. a tie-off point off here, just a little away from the shale slide. Are well, you ready to get back on that horse, huh? Well, I can't go any further, is what I'm saying. That heads south down to the creek, but you should be able to get to the lake just by continuing west. Without any, you know, mountaineering. All right. It's a long summer. You can explore later. Okay. So we're going to head on west. And apparently we're going like, to go, I guess, around and down instead of going directly down that cliff face. I don't know if we could have prevented that in any way. Like, if we could have found, like, a different cache that maybe had some more rope in it. Uh, or something like that, but I guess for now we will just continue on this way and see if we can figure out who the heck is setting off fireworks. I guess this is not the correct way to go at all, so we'll just continue round. Did I just... I, I feel like I saw something move there, but I might have just... It might have been like a leaf or like a butterfly. I'm not too sure. Oh, look at this. Oh, look, someone's been here. Okay. I can hear music in the distance as well. They decided to have a campfire. Oh, they decided to have a campfire, too. The idiots down at the lake? Yeah, them. I just found where they're hanging out. The way he said two at the end there made me feel like we should have found something else before. And we did. Here we go. Look, beer cans. Finding a bunch of empty beer cans. They threw them all over hell. Are you fucking serious? Yeah, sure am. Ugh, people are just the worst, aren't they? They're not great, no. I don't know. <laughs> Again, I'm not too sure what our job is here just yet. The game's been very mysterious about what we're actually doing here, apart from just following this woman's orders. But um, every time we pick up these beer cans, we have the option to clean them up. I'm not quite sure what we're doing with these beer cans when we clean them up, but I'll happily pick them all up and, and clean them up there. Look at that. We're being a good citizen. We're putting away them all, and we're just we're just keeping the place clean, you know? So we've got some backpacks. 
What are these about? They left their packs tied up here. Don't fuck with them. The last thing we need is some hikers filing a report about harassment. Okay. Got some whiskey. They left half a bottle of whiskey. Decent stuff. Drunk pyromaniacs. Fucking great. Okay. Oh, here are the fireworks. I guess they must have bought extra. Found the fireworks. They didn't even try to hide them. Ugh. Well, confiscate them. Okie doke. Um, and then we got clothes. Well, they left their clothes out to dry. It looks like uh, two people. Uh, what if they're naked? Won't that be exciting? 